All right, disclaimer. This is a personal YouTube channel. Any views or opinions represented in this YouTube channel are personal and solely belong to me as the owner and do not represent those people, organizations, or institutions that I or may not be associated with in professional or personal capacity unless explicitly stated. Any views or opinions are not intended to malign any religion, ethnic group, club, organization, company, or any individual. Analytical methods, of course, it seeks to introduce a rational approach to evaluation. So this may be carried out by considering the, uh, the following. So comparison of impacts with legal uh, requirements, standards, and policies on sustainable development. Um, degree to which plants and animals may be affected. Excuse me. And which to that, um, in some cases, um, for example, um, in a mining activity um, or in a mining project, of course, flora and fauna will be affected in one way or another. Um, in which um, that, uh, that adverse effect can be um, mitigated through um, rehabilitation. So, if I don't know if I have a copy of an AAA study, um, uh, a full AAA study on a mining project, but I am so sure that before the DNR AMB issues an ECC to a mining project or mining activity, um, there is always a, a decommissioning or a, de a bad damage phase of the project in which on that part, um, they will be rehabilitating the area. Um, in which on, on some cases, for example, if it's an open pit uh, mining um, kind of method, then therefore you, they have to reclaim the area and they have to... Um, um, they have to find ways to rehabilitate the area. So maybe they will introduce um, species of plants that can strive on a newly rehabilitated mining site or they can introduce um, animals. Um, when I went to the U.S., I actually visited um, one of the coal mining sites in West Virginia. Um, at the same time, we were able also to visit our, uh, an area that is undergoing a rehabilitation. So it's an open pit uh, kind of mining. So what they did is, of course, they have to reclaim the area. So they have to, uh, you know, uh, they, they reclaim the whole pit. Like it's a huge pit. They reclaim the whole pit. Uh, however, the problem is um, what, they, um, what they use are not soil, but a mixture of um, rocks and sediments of soil. So um, when they did their, um, their plant rehabilitation on that specific area, it was actually quite hard for the plant to grow, um, in which, um, in which I, I, I suggested um, for them to not to plant directly first to the soil, but what, what they can do is, you know, they can dig around a, a hole, like maybe a one meter and one meter hole, and then plant the tree there. In which, uh, if you know the tree is already stable, then um, and it's already its roots are already grounded to the soil per se, then therefore it can um, go through the rocky or sediment type of um, type of soil that they uh, that they um, reclaim on that specific uh, mining site. Um, anyhow, um, yeah, degree to which plants and animals may be affected, and then conflict with public opinion or needs. So they have to consider that. And then cumulative impacts, which in themselves are not significant. Also, they have to consider uh, under the analytical methods, the context, uh, context of changes relative to, to time, space, uh, level of biological organization, affected uh, human population and cost, um, degree to which human health and well-being may be adversely affected, and um, the potential effect on the protected areas. So. The good thing with analytical method is um, you have a basis. You have a basis as to what will be the significance of the um, predicted impacts of your specific project or activity. And, you know, not just basically based on, on um, intuition. However, um, since there are a lot of analytical methods, you can actually just choose a few 
or just uh, choose one, whatever is uh, most applicable to your um, identified impact, uh, identified um, predicted impacts. For evaluation criteria, um, there are actually um, um, a lot of criteria that we can choose from. Um, we can use the statistical significance. We can use social values in which, uh, for me, um, for me, it's actually quite, actually in the context of soil scientists, um, experts, it's easy for them to quantify social values, but on my case, um, that's, um, that's hard on my case. However, um, in an EIA study, in an EIA study, if um, there will be an adverse impact to the community per se, and therefore, therefore we have to do a social um, social analysis to that. Um, another eval uh, evaluation criteria is economic values, in which we can do economic analysis, um, ecological protection considerations, health and safety concerns, um, risk potential, existing laws and regulation, and consideration for sustainability. Um, again, it depends on the specific um, identify predictive impacts of your specific project or activity. And among this criteria, you can choose one or two, whichever is applicable or most appropriate. I, I think that's a that's the correct word, appropriate. And then, of course, we have methods of evaluation. We actually have two um, types of methods of evaluation. Um, first one is based on common single criterion, which is money. So, uh, we could have a benefit or cost analysis. Um, we can identify um, the benefits and the cost of the specific project. And then from that, um, excuse me, we can evaluate if um, the study per se is worth doing or not. So we can have more comprehensive in scope, uh, in scope and include the, um, tangibles and intangibles. Um, at the same time, it takes long view and wide view of projects. Um, we can also identify the net social benefit and the net social cost. And it has some limitation, though, uh, when it comes to benefit-cost analysis. Um, because identifying and monetizing um, intangibles, when you say intangibles, these are the kind of things that uh, we cannot give values. And, of course, the choice of the discount rate. Um, the standard, disco uh, the standard uh, discount rate is 5%. Uh, but there are studies that consider above or below that discount rate in which um of course we have to make a basis uh when it comes to um the benefit cost analysis uh we have to make a basis as to what will be our discount rate the next um method of evaluation is based on multi-criteria analysis so um the method seeks to allow um for a pluralist view of society composed of diverse stakeholders with diverse goals and values concerning environmental changes. We can do scoring method. Um, we uh, may use qualitative or quantitative scales according to availability of information on the impact under the data. We can also use um, being. So it's a scale given and agreed by the team. So the team can uh, um, agree and ask to what will be the way. And of course, we can use the Delphi method. So this is um, on expert of opinion or the Delphi panel on various issues are collected and consensus among them is worked out. So this is the one that I was trying to explain to you earlier. Um, um, again, like for example, you have a set of questionnaire and then you, uh, a set of questionnaire of the predictive um, impacts of your specific project or activity. And then you give out that questionnaire to the panel of experts on several rounds. On first round, um, it's actually the same questionnaire, but you can shuffle the question. On each round, you will you will uh, tallying the um, the results and try to look at on the first round which of the predictive um, which of the predictive impacts would likely happen based on um, the experts the panel of experts uh, opinion, and then again on the next round, the second round, third, fourth, and so on and so forth, and then. And then you make an average. Um, and then from that, you can identify um, which among the predictive impacts that would likely happen based on the expert's um, opinion. So that's basically the Delphi panel. 
So um, we can evaluate level of significance um, of each predicted impact. We can use 0 to 3, not significant. So this is actually more of the method of scoring. And we can also indicate with symbols when it comes to levels of significance. Um, we can have a dot with hollow, hollow dot, not significant, um, with a full dot, uh, do, uh, moderate, and a bigger dot, which is a serious. So um, that's on the multi-criteria analysis. So um, basically, that's how you evaluate the methods. Um, I mean, that's, uh, these are the two methods of evaluating um, the identify um, predictive impacts of your um, of your specific project or activity. To that, um, do you have any questions? I know you have a lot of questions.